happening now, controversy continues on the Arkwright Windmill Project. A boil water alert in Dunkirk. And I'm Dakota Hunter in the First Defense Weather Center. It's gloomy, wet, and at least mild today. That's the good news, but I'm gonna bring that S word back into the forecast. Yeah, we'll talk about it coming up. Jamestown Jackals hold a meet and greet and an investigative breakthrough on a local inn. Details coming up in our new Noteworthy News segment. That's news now for Thursday, March 29th. 2018. Live and on demand from the Chautauqua Audio Works Studios in downtown Jamestown. This is your source for breaking news. WNY News Now. And good Thursday to you. I'm Justin Gould, joined alongside Ryan Hedrick. The jackets are off today. So are the gloves. We're going to start punching? Yeah, most definitely. Okay. The gloves are off. <laughs> <laughs> As we have officially launched News Now 2.0, new and noteworthy is what we're talking about today. Pretty much anything um, that you guys want to talk about here on Facebook Live, we got a new comment system, which is pretty fun. And yeah. honestly, I got to tell Ryan and, and the rest of the world, I'm kind of worried about it a little bit. Like, I know. Like, you you like worry I, a lot. You, you worry I a lot. I worry... Because I want it to work. I, know? I, I, know, I know why you worry so much. You worry so much because Justin has worked his ass off Aww. to build this show, He's to build lying. this set. Justin has worked tirelessly, 80, 90 hours a week to build what we're looking at. We're looking at a tremendous HD qualified right. TV I mean, this studio. I hate this. I hate this thing. The feedback? I, I know. No, it's not the feedback. It's just the fact it's in my ear. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> See, I think the, a lot the of producer people, has a lot of love for me, but I don't have a lot of love for what's in my ear. A lot of people don't understand these. They're called IFBs, yeah. and they're, it's a delay by like a second. It's not the delay. It's the fact it keeps poking out of my ear yeah? because I have weird ears. Okay, maybe, I have really maybe we weird need to ears. get you a special like IFB cord. I think we need to get me a special everything. <laughs> but Justin's worked really hard, and he's nervous, and I talked him in, in, into the show slowly. Right. Because and, of the fact that he's been reading press releases, and this is Which no is, knock. Right. This is no, not a knock against you. Right. You've been reading press releases off a teleprompter, but you out there don't deserve that. No. You deserve to hear the truth, you and you want to comment. We right. want the feedback, we want the engagement, and that's what we're gonna give can, you. Can we show them? Let's see if this works. This is one of my worries. If it works, it'll be great. This is awesome, see right so there. there's Beth. Hey, Beth. Hey, Beth. See, so really cool, and I'll go to your other comment here, Beth. We're able to, go through and show your comments on the air, which is which is really awesome. This is so, a breakthrough that only ESPN has like introduced right. people. So as we comment throughout all of this, you guys are able to give us your interaction. It's supposed to show your profile picture, but it this is be. awesome. Isn't this it? is awesome. It's nice. Oh, and Cindy we have some hello. really hello, we have Cindy. some really core stuff that we're gonna talk about today and yeah. it's all because of Justin's innovative creative mind. Oh, now no, had he not, not sacrificed everything and you don't know the sacrifices you made and that's not I'm not going to share that on this program but Justin's super nervous that oh, this yeah. is not going to work I'm confident it's going to work because your voice matters and for a long time we have not collectively had a voice right we have been shunned and we have been screwed over by an agenda by an agenda that's largely a democratic agenda right. that people just have felt right Obscured and, from. And I think a lot of people when they watch like network news or right. even like your evening news, you know, you watch Channel 4 or something, you really can't have that interaction, which is what we're trying to foster here. Right. And we're not telling you the news. We're talking to you about it. Right. And, and that's what we're trying to show. You will not believe what we found out about the budget in and Faulkner. I can't wait to get to that story. What's our first story today? Okay, so let's first talk about if anyone's in Dunkirk right now, there's a water emergency. That's what Christine Schuyler is calling it this morning. Okay. A boil water order is in effect, and they expect that to last maybe into early this weekend. It was after construction crews at the city's water plant caused some sort of leak there and crews say that at this point you can still use the water um, for like so bathing the and water washing crews, stuff. The water crews screwed something up. Right, Do you think right. they hit a pipeline? See they didn't specify oh, that but they might they have. Didn't. 
So, so anyway, so you can still like wash yourself. They said showering's cool. Just don't <laughs> brush your teeth. <laughs> or you don't, don't drink, drink the water. The water. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just don't drink the Whoa. water. Whoa. I almost said something I didn't want to say on the air. That is incredibly uh, no. So they say up. at least boil the water for 60 seconds, cool <laughs> it off, and then you can use it. Or make tea. What if we become? What have we become? I don't know. That's an honest mistake, though. I, I can see that. Yeah. Let's go to the Arkwright windmill story. This story is even more unbelievable. So throughout the last couple of years, really, residents in the town of Arkwright have been shocked by a windmill project mm -hmm. that the town started back in the early 2000s. Well, they've shown up to, you know, town meetings. Here's some footage from an, a town meeting back in January. And this and is all about money, there. right? Right, because the town supervisor told me back in the January meeting that the idea is they're trying to fill their budget. They're, they're trying to lower taxes eventually. Because they're broke, because right. for years they've been making horrible decisions right. and, spent, and spending money they really don't have. Right. So residents voiced their concerns at various meetings in the town of Arquette, and they seem to have felt like it, it hasn't gone anywhere. There's, there's the site of where the windmills will be. Arkwright is a piss poor town. It is. And it's very rural. There's not that many people that truly live there. So who did I call today? Did I call Frederick well, you Norton? You did. So with this, no, um, with no Frederick regardless. Norton. Now this is a discussion. I know we had a little audio. Can we actually listen to this? This happened back in January. Let's listen to this. When you got cars coming with no with no regard to the public at all. I had my kids in the car taking them to school today and I almost came to a freaking sliding stop because the jackass and the loader come out of earnings. Never even looked and stopped to pull into their parking area. Okay. From grinding cement into the dirt, dumping it on the ground a foot deep and grinding it into the dirt with no fiber mesh, with no freaking filter mesh at all. How is that green by any means? How is that green for the environment you by are, any means? You have 30 seconds left. So that's the town super right there. Right okay, the so, so can we come back to us oh, no, real no, quick? Let's, let's keep watching this okay. for a second. So, so see, see how he did what this? Done this is back in January. But see how old he is, Anybody and that's the, can that's look the key. Let's see what the hell they've here. done here, and can say that it's a good thing that you love to see what Arkwright's turning into. I would be disgusted at anybody that could think that this township, the way it was, and it'll never look this way again, was worth what they've done to it. You're done. But see, Frederick Norton doesn't have the ability to see what anybody has become because Frederick Norton is 83 years old. And if you've ever tried to identify with somebody that's 83, and, and that gentleman that's talking to us is probably, what, 40, 45 right. at the and oldest. And he has a family. That's and good. he has a family. He's a family guy. He's making different sacrifices. His level of surrender to his family, to the bills he has to pay, to the responsibilities he has to the community are way different than what Fred Norton has to do. Fred Norton's life is almost over. I'm not being mean. Right. I'm just looking at the relatab relatability factor because... Fred Norton hung up on me this morning. He did. Yeah, I was sitting there. We are going to look at Fred Norton for who he is. He's a pillar of the community. He served the community. Right. But Fred he's Norton's in, on the take. He's been in that I office since early 2000s. I guarantee you Fred Norton's on the take because that windmill project garnered that small broke town that's been making a lot of bad decisions for a lot of years in a row, $300,000. You tell me if you'd sell out for three hundred thousand dollars. I might. Yeah, why not? Would you? It sounds pretty. If good. I gave you three hundred thousand dollars right now, would you? What would you do? Almost anything, right? Right. Because money is coveted, especially right. around here, especially right. in an in an economy that's right for all intents and purposes just stagnant. Right. Right. And and the thing is, I think a lot of the residents feel that. The town's almost, now that they've agreed to this windmill project, right. and, and you see the biggest concern last night at the legislature meeting was that the, the road that, that they're working on, that, that where the windmills are, is impassable. It's a public and, safety and, issue. And, right. And by impassable, they don't mean like there's a bunch of potholes. They mean like the road is almost gone. Yeah, it sucks. The ice, the snow right. is taken over. They haven't plowed. Right. They can't afford a plow truck driver. My question is, the next question I have, and you've covered the story diligently, is where's the money going? Has anybody asked that? I don't think so. Hmm. That's interesting. So we did speak to uh, Mr. Shimagala last night right. at the uh, county legislature meeting, and, and he talked a little bit about, let's listen. 
I do believe that it was um, misinformed information that they based the decision on, that they're now finding out was a mistake, but they're not willing to admit it. Um, and at the same point in time, the entire township of Arkwright and the residents there are not looked at as nothing more than collateral damage. And there's a reason why collateral damage was used as a military term. And I don't look at my family and my safety and my land as collateral damage or to be labeled as that. The town of Arkwright is 37.6 square miles, okay? You have approximately 461 residents that reside in the town of Arkwright to pay taxes. You have 40 families that are gonna benefit from these wind turbines and everybody else has basically gotta deal with what there is. To a point now where they're sending out good neighbor agreements to people that are within 2,500 feet, which is 833 yards, if you figured out in yardage, from a wind turbine. There's houses that are closer than that. Now, now there's these good neighbor agreements were sent out a year ago to some residents. Now I'm receiving them a year later. Why? Well, because they know that they're going to fail. They want to shut everybody up and make sure that there's no legal action going to be taken against them when they do fail. And this is the way they work. This is the exact same way that they work. And for the agreements to be made at a, at a started rate of 20 years means that they know they're not compatible for anything longer than that. And it's a quick way for us out of overseas company to make a shit ton of money on a lot of people's backs at the expense of what they call a number and not home, not roots, not family orientation, not tradition, nothing, nothing but, which is what we're looking at. So that's Jake Sim Shimagala. He's a town of Arkwright resident. Uh, we're going to have much more on this story coming up. I thought we were coming back to Ryan and me. What? What? Dakota is taking over with the yes. first look at our forecast. Dakota is so much They're prettier than I am. They're just us <laughs> off, man. Look at that. I have just horned in onto this whole conversation. And actually, you know, all of them over there are sitting over there without the jackets on. I can't be without my jacket on because you all know my severe weather index. If my jacket's off... We've got severe weather. If it's on, we got sunshine and rainbows. So I'm That's way up. too much for me. Just <laughs> give me some good news. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go into uh, weather. We'll take a look at Lynx One and we'll take a look at the Sky Vision Camera Network that's coming from Lakewood. And uh, you can see gloomy skies. Traffic on Fairmont Avenue looks pretty good. It's 53 degrees, current number uh, at the, uh, the camera site there with a south-southeast wind of three and only 0 0.02 inches of rain have been picked up so far today. Now on the Viper radar, you can see we have a few lighter rain showers pretty much in the western part of the county all of this will start to be pushing uh, east northeast and again the most heaviest amounts of rain uh, currently up here in there's going to be some rain that's going to be uh, pushing in throughout the day today so it's just going to be a wet gloomy and gray day so the forecast for today rain showers throughout the day probably breaks in the rain coverage but again almost like yesterday no sunshine it's going to be gray and cloudy high temp range 47 to 54 47 is going to be right near the immediate lake erie shoreline further inland uh you're going to go up to around 54 degrees with a south wind of three to six so a light wind uh is a pretty good wind uh well at least it's not terribly cold so the wind at this point really isn't as bad out there and a chance of rain around 100 percent today so rain clouds fog but hey milder temperatures but yeah that white stuff looks like it cut might come back for the weekend i'll talk about it in just a couple of mementos wny news now is sponsored by chautauqua audio works 3335 south roberts road in fredonia more than a music store call 679-4333 call now 679-4333 the Main Landing Restaurant. Excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. Everything's made fresh here. We love to be outside, uh, and it's nice inside if it's raining, so we have a choice. Locals and non-locals agree that the Main Landing is quickly becoming a destination. It's just so casual, and just the food is amazing. Uh, I love the hamburgers. But I really like the tuna I had. The Main Landing Restaurant. Excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. It's tax time, so get to Express Bike and Auto in Jamestown for all of your vehicle needs. Service, inspection, vehicle sales, they do it all. For all of your automotive, motorcycle, and ATV service needs, Express Bike and Auto even offers financing. Your true one-stop vehicle shop is Express Bike and Auto in Jamestown. They're located at 1761 Foot Avenue Extension next to Quick Fill. Express Bike and Auto in Jamestown. Stop looking, start saving today. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. All right, welcome back. As I got caught on my cell phone texting somebody I shouldn't probably be texting. You're give not it, taking my it. phone. <laughs> so 
The Budget Inn. <clears throat> Everybody knows that this place is a cesspool of criminal activity, drug trafficking, and even at sometimes crystal methamphetamine manufacturing. This motel, I'm not gonna ever call it a hotel, and you could never get me to say anything nice about this place, is taking state tax dollars, putting parolees up, so you can worry about the safety of your children in the tiny village of Faulkner. How do I know all this? How do I know? Because I have law enforcement sources that tell me that they're taking an absurd amount of calls at the budget inn and that parolees, in fact, one parolee in particular last night was raided by Buffalo parole agents that used the resources of state police, Jamestown police, and Ellicott police. Now, I've talked to the manager who vehemently denies, of course, she's trying to keep this cesspool of a motel open. She vehemently denies this activity is occurring, but we know because we trust the police in this area. Right. And in particular, mm -hmm. I trust this one law enforcement source. So what do you think out there? What do you think about state tax dollars being used for parolees to get their life in order just because for so long, they actually didn't want to get their life in order. They actually didn't care about law and order and they actually didn't care about staying off drugs. What do you think about you having to pay for their stay at the budget inn while they just conduct whatever the hell they want to conduct there. Either they're brewing meth or beating their wives or beating their girlfriends. What do you think? You live in Faulkner. I don't. All right, so this is so hey, It's right above a liquor store right, too. Right, it's all right there in the middle of Faulkner. School's not too far away. So here's the thing. <clears throat> the question is, does everyone get a second chance? Yeah. But does everyone get a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth? It keeps going. Here, here's the better question about second chances. Is everybody oh, willing cool. to work for the opportunity to get a second chance? Because right. because if they don't work for it, why do they deserve it? In my opinion, you get a second chance in life, but you have to work to get the respect of people back in the second chance arena. So if you have a second chance that you feel you've earned or has been given to you, and I hate that word given because we, we work to earn everything in life, I just don't feel like you should take it for granted. I don't feel like right. posting up in a motel and staying on parole is a good way to live your life, especially if state tax dollars are being used. Like I'm working my ass off right now. Right. You're working your ass right. off right now. Dakota, Dakota Hunter is working his ass off right now. AD Sinko is working his ass off right now. For what? So somebody can manufacture methamphetamine at the Budget Inn. I wonder if somebody's actually manufacturing methamphetamine at the Budget Inn as we speak. Steve says it's BS. What's BS? What is BS, Steve? I, I want to know what, what BS about? is. Because if he's referring to the state tax dollars being used yeah. for parolees, I agree. Right. This is the same governor that that can't get it out of the realm of thinking that we need to help other people when we can't even help ourselves. He still wants to help people with casinos like the Finger Lakes. He's actually thinking about bailing out casinos in the Finger Lakes when he already struck an agreement with the Senecas. And now he's behind in payments and guess how that affects you. George Borrello told us last night that that casino development agreement or lack thereof they're like three hundred dollars or $400,000 in the whole of Chautauqua County. And this is only for this year. So state tax dollars are being used to bail out people. And for some reason, I think Andrew Cuomo has a soft heart for criminals mm -hmm. because he wants to a raise the age of responsibility. For what? Right. Some of these kids that, speaking of raise the age, that, that are locked up in county jail right now, you know, some of them deserve to be there. Oh yeah. Have you seen what they what they've done? What about the? It was, was he a nineteen year old? Yeah. What about Jordan Alexander? He had little regard for law right. enforcement when he took him for an hour spin around the right. county. Right. Some of these people deserve to be locked up, yeah. and the problem is that the raise the age. The question is putting them into a separate facility with taxpayer dollars. Is, is that worth it? I think this is an interesting discussion. We need to have more on the other side. Let's right. go to Dakota Hunter, 
We're standing by with weather and then we'll come back. Your state tax dollars are being used for a stay of a parolee or many parolees at, at the, the budget village in. Of Faulkner, in, in the, the village of right, Faulkner, which is a nuisance in the to good police. old village of Faulkner. Right. State tax dollars, baby. Mm. You gotta love it. What a liberal. Now, your first defense forecast with Dakota Hunter. Hey, is that Faulkner behind you? Is that the budget in behind you? No way. Is that well, the hey, budget in on fire behind you? Hey, it could be. Damn. You never know. It could right. be. But it's actually not. This is the HD News Now cam. Uh, oh it's gosh. perched right Man. outside of our studio here. It's actually the uh, Digital building just directly right across the street from our studio here. You can see the flag not really moving a whole lot. That's because we don't have pretty strong winds out there. Currently at the airport, it is 48 degrees. I don't think 48 degrees has ever felt so nice, but unfortunately it's cloudy and foggy. You can see that here, 0.15 mile visibility at the airport that's north of the city because of that low fog. 100% humidity means a dew point of 48. So of course, when you have a dew point, that's nearly the exact same as your air temperature, you're going to have fog and only a south wind of six miles per hour uh, at the airport north of the city. It's the weekend, so it's Thursday. It's not the weekend yet, but we're all looking forward to the weekend since it is Thursday. <laughs> we are. Yeah, well you can tell I'm looking forward to the weekend. <laughs> Might as and, well be the weekend. <laughs> yes, and uh, so for Saturday, partial sunshine, but we will add a few rain showers uh, throughout the day, high temp range 44 to 48. And then for Sunday, scattered snow showers throughout the day. Now, the good news here is I don't expect a whole lot of accumulation, less than an inch, likely on Saturday, on a Sunday, but the temperatures go down 33 to 38. The average high this time of the year is 47. So it's gonna be chilly for uh, Easter and that first day of April. So yikes, get those, hope you put those coats away because you're gonna probably need them. So to break down the forecast for you, we're gonna be right around 52 degrees at two o'clock today. Rain will just be the word all day. We're gonna have widespread rain throughout the day today, 53 at four o'clock. Uh, the winds will be light throughout the day, so that's always good. And as we go to about eight o'clock, it's just gonna be a wet evening. So if you're gonna be going out tonight, make sure that you have, uh, you know, the um, ponchos, the umbrellas, and maybe even the galoshes, because uh, you're probably gonna need them. Doppler vision out there right now. The most amount of the rain is actually off to our west, but we're gonna be seeing some more rain uh, coming our way. And as we zoom right into Chautauqua County here, this is the closest band of rain to us right now. It's coming out of Erie, PA, coming into Chautauqua County. There's the there's the new fresh uh, uh, sweep line now. And uh, you can see here, it's coming out here uh, pretty much, uh, um, uh, it's pretty much near uh, the uh, two interstates where they come together here, 90 and uh, 86, where they come together here. And again, it's going to be moving off to the east northeast today. And again, there's going to be some more rain back to our west. And our next storm system is way down here in the south. Now, yesterday it was out in Texas. It's currently out here. And this is the next storm system. Take a look at it. It's got a lot of Gulf moisture to work with here. And it's going to be riding up the Tennessee Valley into the Ohio Valley and then up to our region tomorrow and then through the weekend. That's going to trigger that snow threat and with this there is a chance for severe weather down here uh, in the south pretty much anywhere from uh, pretty much uh, um, anyway <laughs> whatever anywhere anywhere you see this yellow shade that's the standard slight risk uh, and uh, so that's the severe weather outlook now the good news is we won't have severe weather it's mainly going to be a uh, rain and snow threat as we get into that cold area and again here's just a fresh scan of viper just to show you kind of where that rain is right now again just a higher resolution look for you so now let's take you through future scan this is the in-house viper cast model um, and you can see here it's showing that rain throughout the day today and then the more widespread rain Rain starts to advance into here. Now the yellows to oranges indicate the heavier amounts of rainfall. So again, I think we might see uh, some pockets of heavier rainfall as we go out throughout the afternoon. The rain just expanses in coverage and it continues uh, throughout the afternoon and especially into the evening hours. And then the rain just continues throughout the night. Now, as we go into tomorrow, as we get into some of the colder air, you're going to see a few patches of blue starting to pop up here on the model. That is snow. And probably by this time, when we go on the air tomorrow, we're probably going to see some rain and snow showers 
throughout the area. So again, snow and rain throughout the day tomorrow as temperatures come down just a tiny bit. Now, uh, future rainfall amounts, I think Viper might be overestimating this uh, by a little bit. Take a look at the rainfall totals here. Now, I think Viper might be doing just a tad bit higher than what we're expecting here. I think we're probably going to see anywhere between a half an inch to around an inch. I think Viper went a little nuts with these rainfall totals. So I think half an inch to around an inch today. And that's nothing to really sneeze at. Uh, again, you know, having an inch of rain throughout a day, you know, can be a little significant, but I don't expect a whole lot of problems there with that. Zone by zone for tomorrow, and uh, the temperatures kind of go back down into the 40s once again. We're going to see mid to lower 40s. Now, Lake Erie shoreline, upper 30s. If you're inland, you're probably going to see 40s cool with a wintry mix throughout the day. Probably a few more snow showers as well. Further inland, temperatures go uh, into the uh, lower 40s as well. Now, fog early in the morning, then it will change over to that wintry mix, then probably changing over the all rain, uh, probably by the late afternoon now. Hours as we go into the nighttime hours. Here come the next seven days of your beautiful life on that screen brought to you by Quick Solutions. And uh, 47, there it is for Saturday and a few uh, rain showers as well. Now Easter, again, it's gonna be cold and snowy, probably less than an inch of snow accumulation. I know, I'm sorry, but uh, there'll be at least less than an inch of rain of snow accumulation. That's good there. And temperatures really off the mark for early next week. And as we've been hitting, it looks like April might start colder than average. We will take a quick break and News Now at Noon will continue right after this. First Defense Weather is sponsored by Quick Solutions of Jamestown. Count on Quick Solutions for printing, copying, mass mailings, and so much more. Part of your team. Learn more at QuickSolutionsUSA.com. That's QuickSolutionsUSA.com. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. I just love to be with the dogs and I like to do them one at a time. They don't wait for five hours in my shop. We have full groom, which includes everything from A to Z, nails, of course brushing, tri any trimming that needs to be done. I do offer teeth brushing, which is a little extra. So if he takes me two hours, it's $40. If he takes me three hours, I still keep it down. As long as the dog comes back happy and not at the door, I'm happy. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. What matters to you matters to us. Every story, every day. I sat down with the candidate following last night's meeting, an interview you will only see on WNY News Now. Small, proud, and dedicated community that is shocked, angered, sad. The old Dunkirk City School Building has been remodeled and retrofitted with 21st century technology. I feel demoralized, in a sense, by the power structure. I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but it's oh. there's just not a lot of information, I guess, to change some things, I suppose. Chautauqua County Executive George Borello is in the nation's capital right now, advocating for several water projects in the county. This ban will ultimately uh, lay down some more snow our way uh, over the next uh, 24 or so hours. Now, zooming the radar out. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to News Now 2.0. Woo! Tina Lind Kellum. What we need is employers willing to provide work opportunities for those people. When there is no opportunity to provide for oneself, it continues to promote the never ending cycle of crime and poverty. By continuing to provide free everything without any expectations leads to disaster. Yeah, I, I like that thinking a lot and I'm looking at a press release of from the US Attorney's Office and the headline of this press release is Washington State Company pleads guilty to making a false statement involving a federal grant. Bingo. I want to harp on kind of two words, federal grant. This whole city 
is subsidized. It's a big there, grant. There is no <laughs> two ways around it. Jamestown is in love with the subsidy. You ever heard that song, I'm in love with the cocoa? I'm in love with the cocoa. <laughs> Have you never heard of that? Okay. Well, Jam <laughs> okay, Jamestown, <old> Jamestown <laughs> is in love with the subsidy. The subsidies that are flowing through the city, this whole damn block is subsidized. Except for this office. It's, yeah. This isn't subsidized. No, th there's no subsidy flowing through here. But the yeah, Regilin A qualified be. for the DRI grant. Right. So that's getting a total makeover. In fact, they're gutting that whole damn theater. And everything in there is a result of taxpayer dollars. Can you bring up Yet, the comments again, Andy? They go back through the fundraising efforts to raise more money, to get more money in there, taking right. more money out of the community. And listen, I have no problem, and I hate this IFB, so I'm not going to it anymore. I have no problem with DRI grants or whatever the case may be to make the community better. But when you rely on them, when you rely on grants to take you through life and get you to a place that you could ordinarily got to yourself, that's when you start depleting the community of funds and resources only to put your community in a worse place than you thought it would be in the first place. Does that make sense? Mm. I think so. I, a lot of people are comfortable and you have to move out of your comfort zone to grow. Right. So if you've been used to something for so long and now is the threat of it being taken away or even the idea of it being taken away because you know you look at a number of people that they're willing to give 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 and a lot of people are willing to take 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 but then what happens when we run out well then there's more that's that's why well, where does that come from well it comes from the taxpayers off yeah, the what happens when everybody's taking when everybody's taking then you just have a uh, a society filled with anarchy. Isn't that communism? Wasn't that the whole idea of communism? Oh, yeah. That's absolutely right. It's great on paper, right? Right. It doesn't really work. You know, I don't know why we are the bad guys. Whenever we expose this, I walk around town, I feel like the black sheep of Jamestown. That's why uh, I live right on the outside of Jamestown. wearing black I, today. I, I feel like the black sheep of Jamestown. Oh no, that's the guy that's gonna talk about the bad news. There's, we have a next door neighbor. I hope he's watching because I, I wanna talk to you for a second. I'm not gonna name you, of course. Right. But we have a next door neighbor, a guy that, uh, that runs a business here in town. It's gonna be pretty significant. And there was something very disturbing that he told me or that he messaged me. He said, so we don't get a chance to report any good news. I don't know what good news is and what bad news is. I don't know how to differentiate the two because when I was in school, I was just taught that news is intent versus impact. Right. It's intent versus impact. Right. It's not good and it's not bad. It is just how you intend to deliver it, right. which gives you the impact of the news that is your decision whether it's good or bad. It's not a personal decision, it's not a community decision. So with that said, I wanna to transition to this. Does the opiate epidemic exist anymore? And people are gonna say, oh, now he's lost his mind, he's this and he's That's that. That's a good question. But, but look at this, every epidemic that has ever gone on in America, study American history, think about every epidemic that has ever occurred in, in our society, in our world. Okay. It has burned itself out. Right. That's how epidemics die. They burn themselves out. I wanna ask you, does the heroin epidemic exist anymore or is it just the fact that we're so numb to it we don't even pay attention to it? And I don't know the answer. I don't. I wanna ask the listener because I wanna share a conversation that Justin was the photojournalist on, I was the reporter on last night. Let's go to my conversation with the politician last night, and he was really confused about whether the epidemic- Pierre Chagnon is the, is the conversation. Do you have that, Andy? So this guy, I'm gonna keep talking until we find it. This guy- I'm gonna go look, I'll be right back. Okay, th this guy was um, <laughs> actually uh, kind of questioning where the epidemic was going from here. Chautauqua County is by far, ha has been affected obviously, by the opiate epidemic, but I'm questioning whether or how big the epidemic is right now, because at this point, all we get is press releases about heroin. That's all we, I mean, uh, methamphetamine, that's all we get. 
And we don't really hear about the heroin bus anymore. In fact, I can't tell you when the last time the Jamestown Police Department, and I'm not criticizing, I feel like I have to preface my comments about the police department every time. Maybe I'm just paranoid, but I can't remember the police, the last time they raided a house specifically for heroin, it's all about methamphetamine right now. And I know that drugs go in cycles, but is the epidemic even a thing right now? And maybe I should put my IFB back in, but, but is it even a thing anymore? Because when we perpetuate cycles of lies to get this help and that help, that's exactly how things get misconstrued. That's how misinformation gets spread. I know there's a lot of people that exist in this city that are based on grants. The Mental Health Association is based on grants, but does the epidemic exist anymore? I want to hear from people. I'd love to hear that cut queued up right now. Do we have that, guys? Okay, so we don't have that. Um, if you go... To, okay, we'll, we'll go to the YouTube page, but yeah, this is, this is very concerning to me because like all epidemics, they burn themselves out. So I just want to make sure that we're getting the right information because I think that the politicians may be a step behind. I, I think the politicians may be a step behind. In fact, this interview may prove that they're a step behind. Let's go to it. Well, the, the issue has been that when there's a conflict of interest in the public defender's attorneys with a case, then they can't represent their client. So the courts appoint an outside counsel to represent the accused, okay? Or if we have a case where there are more than one defendant who needs to be represented by the public defender's office, only one of them can be represented by our public defender, and then the courts will appoint other outside counsel. And so the costs for those outside counsels have been far exceeding budget in the last couple of years. Drug activity, what does that say for the future of the public defender's office, and what type of financial ramifications does it have for taxpayers going forward? Well, I, I've spoken to many people about my concerns for exactly what you're speaking about is that today we're dealing with the tip of the iceberg of the opioid epidemic. We're dealing with the people who are being caught and arrested. We're dealing with the people who are overdosing and tragically passing away. But what is the impact on the families that are either left behind or because of the costs of the uh, the, the drug addiction are being deprived of, of funds for their well-being and what is the impact on the children of growing up in those type of environments. Have we lost a generation of, of Chautauqua County residents possibly due to this opiate epidemic? I'm not qualified to render an opinion on that. But you're a resident obviously, not only a resident but a lawmaker. I mean, you, you have observational powers as well as lawmaking power, but from a human perspective, from a resident perspective, what are you seeing? From, from my personal perspective, sure. I am certainly concerned that of the number of tragic deaths that are occurring and the, the impact that these opioids are having on people who even survive um, and on their children and their families and society and the taxpayer. Some say we haven't even peaked yet as far as the overdose deaths and the, and the heroin being flooded into our communities. Is, is this legislative body ready to deal with those fallouts? I don't know how to answer that question. Are we ready? Um, I don't know what it would take to be ready. I don't know what ready means. Um, ready means more money, ready means more awareness, more education, more time on these issues, maybe longer meetings. I mean, a lot of there, there's a lot of work that our Health and Human Services Department and their staff are doing, dealing with a lot of the fallout and a lot of the ramifications of this. Certainly, um, we have made dramatic changes in our, our jail medical because a lot of the uh, inmates that are coming into the jail are dealing with uh, drug and other addictions. And so we've made significant changes there. We've, we've 
definitely spending more money in, in those areas to try and deal with this. But what else should we be doing? Could we be doing? Can we be doing? This, these are the questions that are being asked all over the country. And the conversation continues with you. Lori Lupold said what's even sadder is for some, it's become a way of life, not even a hand up. I that's, agree with you there, Lori. That's actually the culture that we're yeah. in. It has become a way of life. People feel entitled. I'm going to share a conversation I had with go the Chautauqua to. County District Attorney Secretary after this. Let's go back to that long okay, so comment. I want to hear Bobetta this. Bobetta gain. People, your government is trapping you into drugs and making mice out Thank of Thank you. I love that. I love that comment. That's a great comment. Thank you, Bobetta. Get your scripts and sell them on the street. Yep. Put up new businesses in Jimmytown, but clean the messes up before building new these subsidies are all fake. Rick Huber, for example, got grants to help drug addiction instead spend it on a young addicted person to get her a car. Wow. We, we don't know about that 100% being true, but that's what Bobetta says anyways. Sean Fitzgerald is also chiming in here. He said, you knew the danger of drugs and the dare. So No, that dare shirt. He's the, talking about no, that damn dare, dare shirt. shirt. So, the, the, right, that they pass out in school. Yeah, dare to keep your kids off drugs. That was perpetuated right. by one of the biggest drug dealers of our... Listen, people think Ronald Reagan was such a great president. He actually wasn't. He actually wasn't. The, the, the extreme conservatives will say, Ronald Reagan was such a great pre Do you know Ronald Reagan participated in high-level drug trafficking? Did you know that? I didn't know. That. Read the book. Dark Alliance by Gary Webb, and tell me if Ronald Reagan didn't perpetuate a big cycle. But the older conservatives in this county would be like, oh, he's really lost it. He was just the greatest right, thing since sliced bread. He's like okay, when you're pumping cocaine right? into inner cities, that's not being a great president. Go ahead. Well, he's like a celebrity. I mean, a lot of people, you know, you, you yeah. can almost subconsciously, you know, build a wall for yeah. stuff. You know, I mean, I have people that I greatly respect, and if they did something crazy... You know, you almost build that wall of it's unbelievable. So get it yourself. Do not use my taxes to help you. Oh, Democrats want to raise for themselves, knowing the city, county, state is corrupt. Keep voting for nothing, the Democrat. I don't even know if it's Democrat or Republican anymore. No, I really it's a don't big know. Mosh, really. I mean, people who are going to look out for themselves, it makes sense for them to be on different sides. Because I'm really disappointed in the Republican Party in the city because. The inability to get a Republican candidate in Sam Teresi's way for 2015. Are you kidding me, Brent Sheldon? You couldn't even get a qualified Republican candidate to run against Sam Teresi in 2015? Get out of here. Come on, Kim Eklund. Are you, are you guys serious? You call yourself the Republican Party and you couldn't get a serious challenger to get Teresi out of office in 2015? Get the hell out of here. So does that come back to the lack of participation in government? Because we go to city that council. That says they don't care. We go to city legis uh, county they legislature. They don't care. No one's there. But Brent Sheldon has a nice cushy job in the county. Why in the hell should the he city. care? He's the city. No, the county. Oh, he works for the county. Why, why should he care? Who's calling you? I don't know. <laughs> probably, probably Brent Sheldon. Why should, why should Brent Sheldon care? He works in the county. He's been working for the county for 20 years. What has he done for the Republican Party? Besides knock on my door and ask my girlfriend to pass out flyers. Don't do that again, Brent. Listen, here's the thing. If you don't have an investment, an emotional investment in your community, and you're just playing it out until you can collect a pension... Right. Who? There we go. There's, there's no investment. There's, there's only, there's one way out though. It's, it's up to the people. It's up to the people, but, but the people, if they're, if they're lulled into a state of denial, a state of almost being doped up, that's right. what we are. I feel like collectively our voice doesn't matter. Yes, right. complacency. That's it. What are the comments saying? We don't have anything new. All right. Well, that sucks. Well, thank you, Sean, though, for sharing that with us. Yeah, and actually there is one new comment. Uh, Mary wants a big thunder boomer. Dakota, are we going to get that? Well, if a thunder boomer is exactly what I think it is, talking about thunderstorms, I we're going to have to wait just a tiny <laughs> bit while uh, for that to, oh, hi. Uh, I didn't realize that we took uh, the Weather Center camera. 
Hello. We're just kind of doing uh, whatever we want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what's going on. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I have no idea what's going on. And, you know, it's like what I say all the time. The weather people know absolutely nothing about what goes on. Let's take a look at Lynx 1, and uh, we will take a look at that quick solution seven day one final time. And uh, there you see 53 would be the average high for today. Now, if you're near the Lake Erie shoreline, upper uh, 40s. If you're inland, probably mid to uh, upper 50s for today. And temperatures trend down. We'll take a look at Easter, 36 with snow showers. Ouch! Man, oh man, the average high is around 47 degrees, and it looks like that below average factor will continue into uh, early April and possibly verifying that outlook that April will start colder than average. All right, Dakota, thank you. Tina chiming in. Final comment we'll look at today. Corruption is so deep-seated here. Just look at the failed system and officials in this county. This voice is going to li litigation. So... Hmm, I don't know. What do you mean by that? It, the, the voice is going to uh, legalization. Oh, legalization. Maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I read that wrong. You're right. Yeah, legalization, legalization is um, is a whole nother issue. But legalization of drugs, which is I don't know. I mean, drugs are. Listen, man, people are going to get high whether they're legalized. I mean, or it's not. the same thing with booze. You drink and drive, right? I mean, I know a ton of alcoholics, and they don't admit it, just like anyone else. <laughs> we'll give you a hotel room to do it in. Right now, WNY <laughs> News Now, the budget in story is up. It's up. It's read that, read. share it, and call the budget in and ask if they have any parolees you can date if you're a single woman. <laughs> Follow me on Tinder. <laughs> can I get a nice today. parole lead to date we'll tonight? See you right back yes, here. there is. Follow that 102. We have some cocaine for you as well. See you Same tomorrow. Place right here tomorrow. You can give us your comments. We have this cool little thingy where I can uh, click. I'm done. Um, oh wait, Tina's still commenting. Hang on, we're gonna pull what, that what up. Tina, I have have so much picture proof of corruption. I'm asking for interviews. I also advocate positive change. I agree. Yeah, you go, Tina. Join us back tomorrow. Call us in. Do something. We'll figure it out tomorrow. See you then. <laughs> Day two of 2.0. Do you like this? I don't know. I don't know. It's up to you guys. The boss. I suppose. Goodbye. We don't have a.